We're gonna measure infrasternal angle. Infrasternal angle being this part of our rib cage, our lower ribs right through here, where our, true, our last set of true ribs exist and then everything else is our false ribs coming through. So this, we're gonna measure this angle here. And the reason for that is it gives us an indication to two types of patterns we often see, either a compressed individual or expanded individual. Some people like to refer to this as narrow if you're compressed, wide if you're expanded. And this just gives us insights into what type of strategy you're using to move. It also gives us insights into scapular position because if these rib cages are tight and internally rotated with a narrow, then that's going to change the position of my scapula because that little bit of rotation in the rib cage is going to influence where this rests. Because remember, a scapula has a little bit of curve to it, just like the posterior aspect of my ribs do. So if I am expanded, I'm going to have a flatter posterior back and an upper back and that's going to change the scapular position versus if I am compressed and internally rotated down almost like this forward posture position it's going to change that as well. So all these little things that we can start to glean insight into just by measuring the infrasternal angle. So I'm going to take my thumbs and this, there's a lot of nuances to this and there's a lot of great people that talk a lot deeper on how to assess this but grossly speaking we're going to take our thumbs and we're gonna look just underneath where this ribs are. You may have to come up a little bit, you may have to push down a little bit to find it, but then you're gonna take your thumbs away from the body and we're just gonna approximate, is it narrow or wide? And that narrow, roughly less than 108 if you wanna be by the book, greater than 108 if you're a wide. And there's all sorts of combinations, it could be asymmetrical, it could be symmetrical, and also that gives us into, insights into what the right and left sides of our body are doing. So I'm gonna take my hands, okay? Thumbs come together. So I'm gonna take my thumbs, I'm gonna come right under the xiphoid process, the lower part of the sternum. I'm gonna palpate on one side where the lower rib is, same thing on the other. Now notice I can press down to find the edge of it, okay? And I'm just paying attention to what angle. I'm pressing my thumb up against it, and then once I have that, almost like I'm making a footprint in concrete, I just come up right here, all right, and I look at that angle down. I can come back down just to double check, make sure I'm not missing anything. Now, we could be very specific. Some people love to take out a goniometer and measure this. I'm just asking, hey, are you narrow or are you wide? Are you bigger than 108? or you're less than 108. Some people even use 90, albeit they're all very similar. You'll know someone that's narrow, you'll know someone that's wide. And that's how we can leverage measuring the infrasternal angle to give us a profile of what type of strategies they're using.